Welcome back. In this video, we are going to formulate uh, the resource assignment problem that we also call wrap problem as a linear programming problem. And by formulating it in this way, you will see that we can solve very large problems in a very efficient way. So let's just uh, recall what uh, is the wrap problem that uh, we discussed in the last uh, video. So we have three jobs, tester, Java developer, and architect. And we have three resources, Carlos, Joe, and Monica. And our data are the matching scores uh, of the resources and jobs. And the matching scores are telling us how well a resource can perform uh, a job. And we are making the following assumptions. Only one resource can be assigned to a job, and at most one job can be assigned to a resource. So the problem that we want to solve is to determine an assignment that ensures that each job is filled and that each resource is assigned to at most one job. And the objective or the goal that we want to accomplish here is to maximize the total matching scores. So let's see how we can formulate uh, this, this, this problem as a linear programming problem. One important component of an LP problem are the decisions that we are going to make. And that's why we call it the decision variables. So what are the decisions that we need to make for this wrap problem? Basically, we want to identify which resource is going to be assigned to which job. So how many possible combinations of decisions we have? And the table that we have below give us all, all the possible uh, decision variables that, that we have. So we have nine decision variables uh, uh, expressing the possible assignments that we have for this, um, for this uh, problem. And uh, to simplify the notation um, uh, for the mathematical formulation, we are going to use indices for the resources and indices for the, for the jobs. So for uh, tester, we are going to use uh, the index of one. For Java developer, the index of two, and for architect, the index of three. And for the resource Carlos, the index will be one. For the resource Joe, the index will be two. And for the resource Monica, the index will be three. So we are going to define decision variables in terms of these indices. So le le let me now uh, define the, the decision variables. So x r j is going to be equal to 1 whenever resource r is assigned to job j and 0 otherwise. And the index uh, r, which is the index uh, for the resources, is going to run uh, 1, meaning Carlos, Two, two meaning Joe and three meaning Monica. And for the jobs, uh, we are going to have uh, the index one will be uh, tester, the index two will be uh, Java developer, and the index three will be an architect. So now let's define the constraints. The constraints for the jobs are going to be as follows. And in, in, in the table that, that, that we are showing now, the last row has the requirements for each job. So what we are saying is that each job has a requirement of one. And consider the tester job. So the possibilities for the tester job are that either resource one, which is Carlos, fill that job, resource two, which is job, fill that job, or resource three, which is Monica, fill that job. So mathematically, how we can represent this constraint? So we will have a constraint for job one, which is tester. And uh, the, the following equation, basically x11 represents that the resource one, which is Carlos, uh, can fill the job uh, one, which is tester. Or 
job, which is uh, in the stool, can fill the job uh, uh, tester, or um, Monica, which is in the street, can fill the job uh, of, of, of tester. Notice that uh, the first index relates to the resources, and the second index uh, relates to the jobs. And in this particular case, since the constraints is defined for the job uh, one, which is tester, uh, that job one is constant here for each constraint, and we are trying to decide which resource we want to allocate to fill this job. And that, uh, that, that expression that I just used, that one person must be assigned, is represented by this uh, equality constraint. So we are saying, you need to choose a resource uh, to fill this, this job. Similarly, we can define uh, uh, constraints for the Java developer job and the um, architect job. So let's just try uh, the Java developer job, which is uh, the index is two. So now uh, the second index will be always two in, in, in the constraints. And what we are saying here is that either uh, the Java developer job is filled by Carlos or by Joe or by Monica. And uh, we must choose one of these resources to fill, it, to fill this job. And constraint three, which is uh, the architect job, uh, we, 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 we use the same idea. So in this case, the job constraints are three constraints uh, or uh, qualities, one for each job that we have, and we need to ensure that one resource is assigned to, to the job. The resource constraints are going to be defined similarly. So let's, let's look at, the, uh, at the, uh, the following table. So in the following table, what we have in the last column, we have the availability of people. So what, 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 what we are doing is, is that um, uh, each of the resources are available to be allocated. And then, um, so the first constraint is going to be defined for the resource Carlos. And either Carlos is going to be assigned to the job tester, or Carlos is going to be assigned for the Java developer job, or Carlos is going to be assigned uh, as an architect. And in general, we can assume that resources are larger than, than, than jobs because we have a, a bunch of uh, candidates that we can choose from. Um, uh, so instead of having an equation here, we will have uh, an inequality less than, than equal. But I, I will explain this now. So the first constraint will be for Carlos with index one. And notice that the resources are the first index, index here. So it's constant, always the variables have a, 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 the first index as one, meaning this is a constraint for Carlos. And each, each, each variable will define which job Carlos is going to do. So x11 means if Carlos is going to be assigned as a tester, or x12 if Carlos is going to be assigned as a Java developer, or x13 if Carlos is going to be assigned as, a, as an architect. And we have a less or equal to one, meaning that it is possible that we might not assign a, a resource, either be this resource because it might not be qualified, or that we might have other people that can do the, this job better than, 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 than Carlos. And the other constraints are the same. <coughs> so for each resource, uh, we are going to have a constraint. And remember that uh, resources uh, um, uh, are defined in, in our decision variables by the first index. So uh, for Joe, the first index is always two. And the second index are the possible jobs that Joe can do. And this should be less or equal than one because it's possible that we might not assign Joe. And for Monica, it's the same thing. Monica is either assigned to the tester job or the Java developer job or the architect job. No? And it's possible that we might not assign Monica. So uh, if you can see, the constraints can, can be defined by each of the rows of, of this table that we have here. 
So now uh, let's define the objective function. So for the objective function, we want to maximize the total matching score of the assignments that satisfy the job and resources constraints. So notice that uh, for job one, the matching score will be 53x11. So this means that if Carlos is, 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 is assigned to uh, the job one, which is tester, the matching score is 53, which is here. And the, ma uh, the matching score will be 80 if uh, Joe is assigned as a tester, or the matching score will be 53 if Monica is assigned as a, as a tester. So for each job, we can define what, what is the possibility of assigning uh, a, a resource. So for tester, either we 53, for uh, Carlos, 80 for Joe, and 53 for Monica. Uh, for the Java developer, the matching score will be either 27 for uh, Carlos, 47 for Joe, and 73 for uh, Monica. And for the architect job, we will get the matching score of 13 if uh, Carlos is assigned, 67 if Joe is assigned, and 47 if uh, Monica is assigned. So the objective function, uh, getting the matching score, will be the summation of all the possibilities for each of the jobs. Remember, the variables are 0 and 1, so when the variable is 1, it's telling us which resource is going to be as assigned for each job. And remember that uh, for each job, we just assign one resource. So that's why we can express the total matching score by the summation of all the possibilities of assignment um, uh, given the matching scores. In the next video, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to discuss how, how linear programming, uh, the linear programming formulation that we just explained can be uh, implemented using the Gurovi Python API. So thank you very much for your attention and see you next time.